First time, Marshall trying to get to the outside, following the block of Williams, gets to the outside, down the sidelines, and there we saw Vintage Marshall for the first time, his best carry of the day. Another first down, and now the Clipper offense appears to be in gear. I tell you what, I, I mentioned, I just think when you're having trouble running the ball, you better be able to put it in the air, and that defense will loosen just an instant, which allows your blockers the chance to get into them, get into the position to make the block, and uh, the successful throw to Hess, I think, is what leads to the success of that running play. 14-yard gain by Marshall, his longest to the 31-yard line, first down and 10. Now they go to the power eye formation with Marshall at tailback. He gets the handoff following Crenshaw and Williams, but excellent play on the corner again by Pittman. They've had some outstanding defensive plays. Well, Beauregard leading the tacklers over there, but he had help from several teammates. Joe Shoemaker among them. Loss of a yard, second down and 11. Watch DeFrance this time. He's going to go to the air. They're going to go to Hess. Uh, they're going to throw it. Well, he isn't in the ball game just yet. But. Now he's coming in. And they're going to call a timeout. And I think that uh, Coach Barron recognizes the importance of this drive and the need to get it. Eight minutes, 32 seconds to play in the half. No score. We'll be back. Join the hunt to find a quaint English village of cobblestone townhomes with private gardens surrounded by trees. Tally Ho in Winslow Township by DeMeo Builders, starting at 96.5. Time together is precious. Capture it at the condominiums at Doubletree and Glassboro, starting at 79.9. One accident is enough. The last thing you want is to choose the wrong shop to make your repairs. The special technology required to repair today's cars could mean that your family's safety rides on your decision. Jim Boggs Auto Rebuilders in Woodbury has invested in the training and the technology to guarantee that you get a safe quality repair and on-time delivery. Our people take pride in their work and will rebuild your car to its original factory specifications. So when your car needs collision repair and you want it done right, see Jim Boggs Auto Rebuilders at 658 Green Street in North Woodbury, 845-1552. Second and 11 for the Clippers, the ball at the 31-yard line. De France to throw. Has lots of protection. Going deep, looking for Hess, wide open. Touchdown. Touchdown, Clayton. Mike Leonard with another great call. A 31-yard touchdown pass by the highly underrated Keith DeFrance, his 14th touchdown, or excuse me, 11th touchdown pass of the season, the eighth to Joe Hess. Joe Hess with his second catch of this drive, 25th of the season, and it's 6-0 Clayton, 8-24 to play in the first half. Mikey was wide open. I'll tell you what, he just ran right by the uh, deep man for Pittman. Pittman's uh, defensive back looked like he was standing in cement and watched. I don't think he believed that DeFrance could throw it that far. Hess, what a great story. Transferred after freshman year, went to Buna, and then back to Clayton this season. Are they happy about that? They go for the two-point conversion, looking for Hess, but out of the end zone, and it'll be no good, so it'll remain at 6 nothing. Let's see that touchdown again, Mike. Now, watch. I don't know if the end, you'll see a defender for Pittman. It'll be just standing there saying, to France, you can't throw the ball this far, but this ball is put right on the money, right on the money to Hess. It there he is right there. Now the defender decides to show up at the last second, too late, and Hess is in for the score. Keith DeFrance, Mike, we have not heard a lot about him. Uh, Clayton doesn't get as much publicity as some of the other teams. Jim Barron happy with that drive, of course, uh, but he now has 11 touchdown passes on the season, Mike, and he is also approaching a 1,000-yard passing season, and uh, he is only a junior. So, you know, things looking pretty good for the Clippers next year. A lot of underclassmen. Marshall, of course, only a junior. There's a lot of excitement in your town about this Clayton program. Well, you can tell by the crowd that's assembled here on the uh, Clipper side, as you can see now from the left uh, end zone to the right end zone. They have just filled the place up. They love what's happening. Broken ball with a short kickoff, taken at the 25-yard line by Somerville. Somerville still on his feet. Breaking a couple tackles, still moving. And they can't bring him down. Somerville runs about 40 yards, it seems, and manages to get it back to the 38. 
Well, he did too much east and west running, not enough north and south running that time. Uh, you can run all over the field, but the idea is to go from one end to the other, not from one side to the other side. Can't fault him for effort. 6 nothing. Clayton, 8.05 to play first half. And Pittman will start this possession from its 38-yard line. Yeah, the Clippers would love to see a turnover. Panthers have to guard against that. The momentum shift has occurred, obviously, at this point. Cressman operates the attack for the Panthers. In the reverse, so lots of running room. A well-executed play with Chris Jones gaining uh, nine, close to a first down. Jones is simply 5'7", 140 pound senior. Good faking again by Cressman in the backfield. It's what really makes this play effective. Good, looks like it's gone that way. And then here comes Jones who finds the hole. Two excellent blocks thrown on the right side. And Jones saw it and read it to the inside and cut right in there. That's the key to that play, getting to read whether the hole's inside or outside. He got nine to the 48, second and one. And the carry by Berwick should have the first down. No, excuse me, that is uh, Howard Dreisiaker. Counter play again. Boy, that has been their favorite play all day here. The opening half. The advance to near midfield. First down and 10 for Pittman. Seven minutes, 10 seconds to play in the first half. A couple of teams that have had pretty good offenses this season uh, in a game that has been dominated so far by the defenses, save that scoring strike of 31 yards to France to Hess. That's the only score of the game. Now they're talking to both captains. I think there's been a little extracurricular activity happening out there, and they're telling both of them, I'm sure, the referee is uh, saying, hey, guys, we're here for Thanksgiving. Big crowd, a lot of media of attention. Let's keep things uh, under control. Let's not embarrass yourselves or your families or your schools. They've got that speech memorized, you know, and uh, it's usually effective and works, and you credit the referees who take the time to do it. First and 10, just short of midfield. Berwick breaks a tackle. Nice play to the 45, gain of about five. It'll be second down and five for the Panthers. Berwick in relief of John Weisburn, the fine sophomore today, doing a good job. Well, they counter right. This time they come back and counter left. And what they're doing, I think, is playing off the aggressiveness of the Clipper linebackers. Those linebackers cannot go first movement. They've got to cover the area to which they're assigned. Instead, what happens is Pittman starts right, and both linebackers in the inside uh, start moving in that direction, and they come back in the uh, with the counter. Second down and five at the 45. We'll counter play again. Sharpnack breaks a tackle, gets to the outside with a good fake. Finally brought down before by Broken Ball, but a first down pickup by Sharpnack, and Pittman back uh, knocking on Clayton's door again at the 32-yard line, first and 10. All right, now, that's not a counter except by the quarterback action where he reverse pivots as steps as the guard on the right side pulls out and comes down to the left to lead the way. The action, as far as linebackers goes, is the same as if it had been a counter with that reverse pivot by the center, or the uh, quarterback. Ball at the 32, first down and 10. Sharpnack, same play, gets to the outside. Dragged down, DeFrance, Keith DeFrance. And he had help on the play by number 28, Keenan Colburn. Gain of about five, second down and five at the 29-yard line. Pittman has moved the ball fairly well, but still nothing on the scoreboard. Five minutes, 25 seconds to play in the half. Quick pitch to Berwick. Penalty marker is down. Berwick gets a couple. I don't think they were set. I'm not sure, but I believe that uh, one or two of the linemen were moving right at the snap and were not set. Let's see if that's the call. Okay, we have motion on the offense. Right, Is that our first or side. second penalty? We've had a clean game so far. Well, they've got to move them back here. They're taking a lot of time to explain it and discuss it. You wonder when uh, Beauregard's going to come into play in this ball game. Hess, uh, we Archie, talked about the... Offense, repeat second down. We no, thought that Clayton Lord needed Lord. him in the offense. I think they need Beauregard in the Pittman offense. Uh, time for Cressman maybe to do that double fake again, Lord, no, try to freeze the defenders in the secondary and then hit Beauregard, which will be 
difficult on this play. Second and 10, the ball at the 34-yard line. If the Clippers react uh, properly, knowing that it's a probable pass down. And they reverse again, and uh, a couple of yards for Chris Jones. Credit Len Smith that time, 74 for the Clippers, who held his position and made the initial hit on Jones. It wasn't credited with the final tackle, but he held his position as a result. When Jones shows up, he's there to make that hit, slow him down, and let the linebacker get to him. Jones got three, third down and seven. Clock running, 4.35 to play in a half that's been dominated by the defenses. Ball at the 30-yard line of Clayton. Clayton's defense so far has been a little bit, but not broken. I like to tell you what, they, they've got plenty of room on the right side, but they're coming back with motion the other way. Cressman getting a big rush, and he is gonna be sacked. And is it Where a, is he? No, they will not call that an attempted pass. They will call it a fumble. He was drilled. The ball is recovered by Cesar Sims. And the second turnover of the football game gives Clayton great field position this at the 43-yard line. You think they may question this one? Watch on the replay here. Let's see if the arm moves at all. Now he's going down. And the arm is up. No, that's a good call. good call. The ball is knocked away. Good call by official referee George Pendini. Of course, that would be in the grasp in the NFL. The ball at the 43-yard line. Sims with the recovery. And they go deep again looking for Hess. Wide open is Hess. He takes it on the run. He's going to score again. Hess wide open. Nobody within 10 yards of him. Clayton has its second touchdown, both of them, on DeFrance to Hess connections and it's 12 nothing Mike how can you get that open right you get that open when there's a miss uh, assignment in the backfield defensively what happened they were sending a uh, uh, Derek Crenshaw into the about 10 15 yard zone and he turned on a hook pattern quarterback to France pumped at him and everybody closed to him Bob and when that happened then Hess just went on a circle pattern deep and turned on the great speed and the France really throws that football, doesn't he? I'm surprised they're going for uh, one in this situation. They kick by, uh, no good by broken ball, but it stands at 12 nothing, and both of the touchdowns, De France and Hess, and watch this, how open Joe Hess is. Well, he's pretty open in any event. We'll try and get that racked up for you again and show it to you, but I'll tell you what, it was De France's pump to Crenshaw, who was 15 yards downfield. All the defenders from Pittman closed there, and then Hess just uh, turned on the speed and went upfield all by himself. Now we'll see it. There was Crenshaw, right to your left of your screen, where everybody wow. was closing, and then that left Hess, who just takes off. Nobody knows he's not, even out there, and he's got great speed. You cannot get more open than that. Quick break from Pittman High, 12 nothing. Clayton. We'll be back. We find our weary traveler walking east on Route 40 near Woodstown in search Where's of the famed Sirota Chevy Where's Olds Jeep Eagle Elmer? and Geo. Where's Elmer? Our traveler Where's knows that there is only one way to avoid high-pressure sales and sucker stickers, Where's and that Elmer? is to visit Sirota. Where's Elmer? Then Where's suddenly Elmer? our weary traveler Where's sees Elmer? something ahead in the distance. Sirota Chevy Olds Jeep Eagle and Geo at the Pole Tavern Circle, routes 40 and 77. It's Elmer! Country music lovers know how to have a good time, and they know where to have a good time. At the Silver Rose Saloon in West Edford. Come on in for some of the finest country music as we bring in bands from across the country. Two-step your heart's delight on the Silver Rose's huge dance floor. And if you don't know how, then join us for two-step dance lessons every Monday through Thursday. If you're looking for fun, the Silver Rose Saloon will show it to you. Open Monday through Sunday till 2 a.m. Sharpnack on the return of the kickoff for Pittman High gets it out to the 39-yard line, but Clayton High with two second-quarter touchdowns, both of them on passes from Keith DeFrance to Joe Hess. The first one for 31 yards, this one for 57 yards. Joe Hess showing us why he cut 23 balls coming into this game. Mike, he now has well over 500 yards uh, on receptions this year, and easy to see why he's averaging more than 20 yards per catch. Well, he has the good speed and the ability to run after he catches the football. And 
New back in the game for Pittman. Fumble, but after the runner is down, I believe. Let me tell you, Bob, you can see the momentum shift now, can't you? Pittman uh, just does not look like they are ready on that play. And the Clippers, on the other hand, you could just sense that they were coming with the fast charge and able to defeat the blocking pattern of Pittman with little, if any, problems at all. And it'll be interesting to see what Reddick does here in the final 247, whether or not he'll just keep running the football or try and get it in the air and get a score be before halftime. Second down and 11, the ball at the 38-yard line. Pressman to throw, gets good protection, has a man wide open, hits him. Tackle made by Colburn. Mike, we have a player in the game for Pittman, number 40, that nobody, nobody, knows, knows, nobody huh? knows who he is. Nobody, nobody knows. Nobody from the uh, Pittman uh, uh, group here in the press box knows who he is either. We went check with the numbers before the game, but might be a late we do not have a number 40. Glass bar or something. Right? <laughs> nice and now he's up. out, thank goodness. That'd be terrible if he scores a touchdown. <laughs> It'll be that Sam Incognito again. A player has seen a lot of action on Channel 5 over the last 12 years. Third down and one, the ball at the 48-yard line. And first down carry for Sharpnack to the 45. Mike Pittman has moved the ball well, but they've self-destructed a couple of turnovers. We understand that Howard Dreisiaker is the Pittman player number 40. It's going to be a Pittman timeout. A minute 51 to go and a half. Plenty of time for the Panthers, but they want to get one back before halftime. They're again in Clayton territory just past the 45-yard line. Let me tell you, Rob Marshall is doing a good thing here, taking him out of the ball game. He's walking slowly off to the other side. And, uh, he has really been going jaw to jaw with a couple of Pittman players, and they cannot afford to lose him. Remember, referee Bendini has already warned both teams. He doesn't want anything... Uh, out of sorts from them, and uh, they make a good decision. Get him over there and let him uh, just cool down for the last 151 of this half, unless they get the ball back. That looked like that was uh, what Jim Barron was trying to do, was cooling down a little bit. Clayton 12, Pittman nothing. This Thanksgiving rivalry, uh, one of the oldest, most traditional on Thanksgiving Day, and of course, make an awful lot of controversy uh, in New Jersey now over the revised NJSIAA playoffs, whereby some of the Thanksgiving games are moved to the previous Saturday, and we saw that in Gloucester County with Woodbury Gateway and Delcy uh, Gloucester because of those teams uh, participating in the playoffs. A lot of people don't like that, Mike, and that's a controversy that is going to rage on until the vote comes up again in another year. Well, I'm uh, one of them who does not like it. I haven't talked to many people who do, to be honest with you. I know John Oberg at Delcy is vehemently opposed to it. First down and 10 for the Panthers. Jones with some room. And Jones runs that play so well. Big first down carry down to the 32-yard line. Pickup of 13 yards. And uh, Chris Jones, 140-pound senior, with another great gain. It's going to be first and 10. Now Pittman will line up without a huddle. Clock running, minute 44 to go in the half. Pressman to throw. Gets a good block. Throws off balance. Hit oh, man, a big hit. A big hit by De France. De France, but a completed pass to Somerville, and the ball at the 22-yard line. Good drive by the Panthers. The clock's still running, a minute 20 to go in the half. Another first down for Pittman. Cressman did a good job here. Look at the pressure he gets. He steps inside that. Then he looks upfield, sees the man short, and look at that hit by DeFrance. But they better stop celebrating the hit and play some defense here. They do not want to let up a score right before halftime. Cressman to throw. Good protection. Breaks down. Now he has the ball tipped, I think. Was it tipped? Yes. It, mm -hmm. Good defensive play on that play by Len Smith, a 235-pound sophomore. And that was a tipped pass. It'll be third down coming up in two for Pittman, but the important thing here is the clock, 58 seconds to go in the half. Those of you watching this ball game can join us on Monday and Wednesday for Woodbury Maple Shade, first right. round of the Group 1 playoffs. We're going to be doing that one on Saturday. Sharp neck with the carry down uh, to the 20 for the first down. They're going, they'll call a timeout here. 
They will get the first down. Pittman on the sideline signal for a timeout, and they'll give us a chance to take a break. 53 seconds. Now we're going to stay right here, Mike. 53 seconds to go in the half. Pittman uh, has moved the ball well all morning, but they've had a couple of costly turnovers. And down at the 20-yard line now, Pittman uh, wants to get one of these back. And well, how about that? We have Channel 3 here today. Everybody's here, Mike. It's supposed to be an important you know, game. The uh, Clayton team has gotten a lot of exposure on this ball game. Uh, the Inquirer has featured them, of course, because of the turnaround and the long history of not having winning seasons. And uh, the last time being back in 59, the story told to the people in the local area so many times. But it has excited a lot of media attention. Yeah, I think this is about as many uh, uh, reporters, newspaper reporters, and uh, electronic media people that I've seen in a game in Gloucester County, a regular season game for a long, long time. And when you look around, Bob, check the, all the way around the field, the, the crowd that is now assembled. It's, it's just wall-to-wall -wall people here. Great to see. 53 seconds to play in the half. 12-0 Clayton, but Pittman threatening. They're at the 20-yard line. Beauregard, number 44, has been the primary receiver all season long for Cressman. He's lined up on the right side. Cressman to throw, gets a big rush, and he eludes the tackle. Cressman will run with it and knocked out of bounds by Keith DeFrance, who has the two touchdown passes for the Clippers, makes a big defensive play here, but Cressman did get out of bounds to stop the clock with 45 seconds to go. The big play was eluding the defensive pressure coming almost to his blind side from the right defensive side for the Clippers. Now, they got out of bounds, the clock stopped, and they still choose yeah. not to go into the huddle, which I think is a mistake, but uh, let's see what happens. They'll probably score as a result. Loss of two, quick pitch to Berwick. Berwick will get out of bounds, forced out by Keenan Colburn, who's had a big first Berwick half defensively. 41 seconds to go in a half. Remember, they have Sharpnack, a real good place kicker, but he would, uh, there may be some question as to whether uh, Reddick would elect to go for three when he's already down by 12 in this situation. Right. Third down and five. He's got to get points on the board out of this drive. More importantly, his team has to get points to, just for the mental aspect. They don't want to go to the locker room down 12 nothing and they don't want to go t down 12 nothing after a drive so close to the end zone they're down in five they carry by berwick berwick so, is stopped hmm. short of the first berwick down by about guard. a yard now Pittman wants another timeout they'll stop the clock with 33 seconds to go now this becomes the most critical first half play for the Pittman panthers they they need only a yard for the first down however they only have 33 seconds and they need 11 yards for a touchdown so Mike, this is an interesting call. I believe they have one timeout to go. And uh, what's interesting about it is the choice. What are you going to go to here? Uh, you're going to throw the football. You've got two yards at least, it appears. Uh, pretty darn close to two yards either way, one side or the other. Or you're going to try and run it. Uh, Reddick has to make the judgment here. I'm, I'll tell you what. I think they go with the counter play again. Off the left side, they've had a lot of success with it. And this crowd that's assembled here is uh, interested in it. I'll tell you, but when is the last time we've had wall-to-wall -wall people at a game? It's good to see. Oh, Real go good back to, to the left there. Go back to the left there. To the left, to the left, cameraman. Oh, good crowd. There's the marker we want. Right there. That's the one they need. Fourth down and one. The There's the counter. By sharp yep. neck, sharp neck. Touchdown! Touchdown, 11 yards, scoring run by Sharp Knack. It comes with 26 seconds to go in the first half, and Pittman, with a great call on fourth and one, gets the touchdown to get some right back in this football game. It's now 12 to six, and, and remember, Sharp Knack, a real good kicker, and he'll try to make it a 12-7 football game. Yeah, well, that's the play we indicated. It's been a successful one for him to counter back to the left side, and they apparently had it written down there, the same as I had it written down here, and they went with it and got the score. What a big touchdown. Maybe they got the play from you. Is that possible? Well, uh, they were listening, leaning over from the top. <laughs> 11-yard touchdown run by Sharpneck. Now he'll try to make it 12-7. Sharpnack, plenty of distance, and he drills it through with authority. And Sharpnack with all seven points. It's 12 to 7, Clayton. 26 seconds to go in the first half. Mike, that was a very impressive drive by Pittman. 
after they were really burned on that second touchdown pass to Hess. Uh, the impressive thing is exactly that. Not so much the running, the uh, passing to keep the drive alive, but the response to the second touchdown of the Clippers. It appeared on the first play or so of that drive, first one or two plays of that drive, we talked about the momentum shift to Clayton. You just didn't see the Pittman line getting out and defeating the Clippers defense as they had earlier. And it appeared that momentum had shifted so much to Clayton that it may be becoming a long day for Pittman. But that was the impressive thing to me on the drive, that they were able to go down the field and take all the time they did, and then more importantly, put it in at the end. Uh, we'll take a look at it. And the big play has been the counter play back to the left side all day for them. There's the fake to the right. And they come back across here to the left and a good block thrown. Uh, on uh, Newland to get him out of the way and get the touchdown. Nice bit of running by Sharpneck mm -hmm. too. Well, we expected a good football game. That's exactly what we've got. Clayton leading 12 to seven. Two touchdown passes to France to Hess and now Sharpneck with a scoring run of 11 yards and then he kicks the extra point. And we're at 12 to seven. Clayton trying to clinch not only its first winning season since 1959 amazing the year john mondelli was born is that right mike uh, what is that the year that john mondelli was born yeah well i somehow know i'm not a historian <laughs> that records that but you are correct and smart play by clayton as one of the up men falls on the football rather than risk picking it up you know, I, Mike, the way they're throwing the football and getting Hess open, I think with 24 seconds to go, I might try that. What do you no, think? No, absolutely. you got to go to, to uh, Hess. But uh, now, what, the, see, this is a mistake uh, the Clippers make here. They, they burn a timeout. They'd already used one, remember? And uh, they knew they were going to have the football. They knew they were coming out on the field. They should have had the play selected unless Coach uh, Barron has decided they don't want to put the ball in the air and take a chance on it interception or something of that nature and he may be out here and telling them look we're just not going to make any mistakes and if, but if that's the case why not let the clock run right I, I just sometimes don't understand timeouts and when they're called by coaches 20 seconds to go and they have time for at least two plays maybe three by the clippers what i would do here though bob i'd send hess long and the opposite wide receiver long and then i'd flare believe it or not in, into the middle of the field one of the speedy backs for the clippers and hope that Everybody will be so concerned about defending against the touchdown, he'll be open there and be able to run and perhaps uh, make a move into the end zone. Boy, that DeFrance-Hess uh, combination, of course, they're only juniors, Mike. That's mm -hmm. got to scare a few teams for next year. Yes. Hess lined up on the left side. The split receiver to the near side is Castrava. They'll operate out of the shotgun. DeFrance going deep, and that one is up for grabs. Hess, look, comes out of nowhere for the catch. What a catch by Hess. He's going to go. An amazing play by Joe Hess. Mike, no way he catches that football. This you is, are right. This is one of the most amazing touchdown catches, catches we've had on Channel 5 for a long, long time. This play is amazing. Yeah, he said, too, he said, I don't know how it happened. Put the palms, extended them up. said, I don't know. Number one, it was a terribly thrown ball by DeFrance in my mind. I said, what is he doing? He's just throwing it up in the air, but who shows up there but the oh. tallest man on the field, at least uh, as far as backs and ends go, uh, young Mr. Hess, and uh. reaches up and gets it, and then they just bang each other, and all of a sudden he finds himself in the opening, and again, with that great speed. Remember, Hess did not start this ball game. His name was not on the starting lineups we got in any event, and we had received no indication. I'd still love to know why he didn't oh. start. Back-to-back 57-yard -back touchdown passes from De France to Hess. Three TD passes to Hess today. We're at 18-7, to and this one, Mike, is going to go in the Channel 5 archives. Mm -hmm. It's got to rank with the, with the greatest touchdown catches, touchdown plays that we've seen. You have the same feeling I did when he threw the football. What's he doing just throwing it up oh, there? I said it was up for grabs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when, when he threw the ball, there were two Pittman defenders playing center field in perfect position from the interception. Hess comes out of nowhere. Yep. Absolutely out of nowhere. Not only does he make a spectacular catch, but a spectacular run. They'll go for two. Straight ahead. No, no. Great fake. Right over the middle. Guess who? <laughs> Two-point conversion pass to Hess. But I think we have a penalty. 
No, there is a flag, we'll send it's against Clayton. Well, that was a great Pittman player. Here we go black here, gentlemen. Great play fake by DeFrance on that one. I am impressed by this combination, Mike. Mm -hmm. To say the least. Yeah, it's difficult to imagine that the uh, program for DeFrance is correct where they list him at 125 pounds. Do you believe that? We got an illegal block, shot block, on the offense, repeat the try. The Clippers had two men open in the end zone that time, Bob, and Hess was the second of the two. They could run that pattern again. And